everything we want to do. And good morning and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful, gorgeous San Clemente. Isn't it a great day to be alive? Yes, it is. So whoever you are, whatever path you're on, you are welcome here. We are a transdenominational center that welcomes everyone on every path that you can think of. So welcome this morning. We're going to open the service this morning with our flames of faith. And Marlene. <laughs> And so it is. <laughs> so we perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths, all sentient beings come from the one great universal presence that we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience. And we honor it here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and the practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and the path of peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as our practitioner Marlene Cuckler lights the last candle, please let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. Please join me in prayer. As we join together in this cosmic stream of pure loving God consciousness, we recognize and we know that there is only one life. We know there is only one divine beauty, there is only one infinite love, there is only one intelligence. This one is the beloved. This one I choose to call God. This one is spirit. And each and every one of us is a sacred activity of this beloved energy. We are the light. We are the compassion. We are the love. We are the presence of God. And it is expressed through every single one of our thoughts our actions, everything we do is an expression of the divine. And so this morning I affirm and I decree that all is well and that each one of us is here on purpose to awaken to their divine potential. For we truly are alive, awake, and aware of this, this essence that lives within us 
that motivates us, that moves us forward, that loves us. I know this service unfolds in absolutely perfect divine right order. I know that our guest speaker is lifted up to the highest consciousness and that each one of us glean the wisdom from his presentation this morning. I know that this is the truth and it sets us free, free to love, free to be, free to expand and grow. And so I place my words into divine mind where truly they've already been expressed and already been created just as I spoke. And so my heart is full of thanksgiving and deep gratitude for this time together, for this center, for this teaching. And I anchor this prayer in confidence. I anchor it in love. I anchor it in joy. As we say together, and so it is. I'd like to uh, welcome Pam Rock up to the platform for our affirmation and our declaration of principles. Thank you, Reverend Judy. All right then, please say with me our declaration of principles. I believe in God, the one who created intelligence, operating through the universe, and operating throughout my entire being, now and always. I believe this perfect spirit operates upon the law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect creative intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to produce health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. I use it now, and I rejoice in it, and so it is. And now, if you will join me in saying our affirmation for today. Today, I awaken to the glory of my being. The same energy that keeps the stars in place is in God's light in me. For this awareness, I am so grateful, and so it is. Thank you, Pam, and please welcome Allendale Dale. My wife told me to do this song. <laughs> it's an Al Jarreau song called Morning. Not morning, morning. morning. But the operative phrase is, uh, it's fine in my mind.
six years ago and I was so impressed and my hands were sore from clapping so hard back then. I just remember it's so good, so I'm so glad. So I want to give you a little rundown on him. Um, he is a uh, national speaker and workshop facilitator. He is recognized uh, a leading resource in the field of diversity and inclusion, generations, mindfulness, and leadership. He assists major corporations, nonprofit organizations, and government and academic institutions with innovative strategies to integrate mindfulness, inclusion, and evolving generations into management and leadership roles. Named as one of the emerging spiritual leaders in our world by Reverend Michael Beckwith, Stefan is committed to a shining light of hope peace and power into every environment he enters. Please give a warm and wonderful welcome to Jefan Seeley. Thank you. So, you know, when people read those bios, I'm like, I'm just a regular human. Um, I travel around and have the wonderful opportunity to meet a variety of very beautiful and wonderful individuals, hopefully reminding them to look within and recognize that there's something great that's dwelling, not just within you and I, but within everyone. Yeah. And so if I'm going into organizations and talking about diversity and inclusion, or I'm working with individuals around mindfulness, or I'm standing in front of Center for Spiritual Living Communities and just encouraging individuals to recognize there was a golden thread that is running throughout all things, so be it. Yes. That is something that I truly believe each and every one of us can do each day, each breath, each moment of this glorious life that you and I have the opportunity to experience. If you're with me, being that it's Sunday, can I get an amen? amen. All right, I'm done, thank you, no. Okay. So, I was here about three years ago. By a show of hands, if you were here three years ago when I was here, we, okay, so you know my, my speech verbatim, right? Okay. Well, I like to begin with a, a very simple poem that, that goes as follows. I opened up my mind and love is received. I look within my heart and realize I have been given all that I need. I embrace this type of understanding, realizing that within each and every one of us is this safe haven of peace as we slowly exhale this breath to share this life that we have the opportunity to breathe. So just think for a moment. 
If we truly open our minds to the declaration and the conversation that many of us have or that many of us embrace, isn't it quite interesting that we are the ones who are assisting in the assembly of our reality moment by moment by moment? So it matters not necessarily what another individual is doing because we can embrace this state of empowerment always within ourselves. For we are the ones who are thinking our thoughts, choosing our choices, committing to our actions moment by moment by moment in assisting in the assembly or the co-creation of this experience. So being that I was here three years ago, the, the question that I have for all of us, and those of you who weren't here uh, three years ago, it's quite all right. The question that I have is, have you truly been living? Have you truly been living? And I say this because if we look close, you know, there's one thing that's been continuing to stand out as I've been traveling down this spiritual path, and I've been on it for about 10 years, and as I like to tease, I stumbled upon it when I was five. So 10 years ago, I drove here, I drove here, I have an idea. Um, but it was about 10 years ago, okay? And there's been one incredible thing that has been continuing to stand out to me as I've had this opportunity to travel down this particular path of spirituality, and it's the recognition of how incredible this gift of life that you and I are experiencing truly is. If we think about it, honestly, in this very moment of now, in this infinite universe that we are all a part of, minerals and elements that are combining and intertwining in such a unique way that new planets and stars are being formed. There was an abundant sun that is shining down upon this glorious earth that is spinning and orbiting in such a divine and harmonious manner. That illumination from above, trees are reaching towards it, seeds are slowly awakening to their own inherent greatness as they are resting in soil that has been accumulating nutrients since the beginning of time. Animals that we are sharing this planet with, other individuals that we are sharing this sacred earth with. And there was not only this infinite universe that is out here, but there was also an infinite universe in here. Our hearts that are beating our lungs that are breathing, our blood that is flowing, our cells that are dividing, our atoms that are thriving, you see the one thing that has been continuing to stand out to me and continues to stand out is the recognition from the furthest planet to the closest atom. There was one constant that is always there, and that is the divine is always present. Some people call it God. Some people call it the universe. Some people call it infinite intelligence. You see, I've yet to find a word that can truly encompass the all-encompassing, for it is the very essence that enables me to take this breath and speak this word out into the ethers. And it is not just within me, it is within all. So if I truly declare that God is the one infinite essence, the infinite intelligence that is flowing throughout all things, then is it not true that I should also see that reflection within every single person who I have the opportunity to pass? Now, it seems as if for many of us at times, and I'm talking about myself, Peter, honestly, it seems as if I am not always remaining in that type of alignment. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. At times, perhaps, we go out and we, we embrace this thought pattern, and, and we're not always thinking positively and empowering about every single individual who we have the opportunity to pass, or every single person that we see talking back to us or talking at us on the television screen, unless you're watching just, you know, those, those stations that you, you gravitate towards. But as my mentor, David Alt, often says, we are committing thought crimes. We are thinking certain ways about another individual or perhaps about ourselves that makes us forget that there is this golden thread that is running throughout all things. And so that's why I ask the question, have we truly been living? Have you been recognizing that you are brought to life by this infinite essence that is enabling the sun to shine down upon us? Recognizing that it's not just within you, but within all. And a way that we can begin doing this is we have this sacred opportunity to take a simple breath each and every day. I would like to ask you, does anybody know on average how many breaths you and I have a chance to take each day? Anywhere from zero to a million. I mean, we've got a well, wide, wide span here. A bunch. Three. A bunch. Yeah. Somebody, did you say three? He's, he's breathing very slow. He is, he's very, very mindful of breathing. On average, we take about 25,000 breaths each and every day this is day number 279 of 2019, which means we have less than 100 days left of this year. 
And I went to school for accounting, so I got my numbers down, right? Um, that's how I became such a, a great speaker, by the way. Um, my debits and credit skills are, are quite superb. Um, so this is day 279. We take on average 25,000 breaths each and every day, which means you and I have had the opportunity to take roughly 6.9 million breaths this year. <laughs> And of all those breaths that you've had the chance to take, how many have you been truly aware and conscious of? Somebody's like, well, I was walking up the stairs the other day. Boy, I could feel those breaths. <laughs> Another sacred thing that happens, just a natural occurrence within each and every one of us that can help us slow down and recognize that we are living is not just the breath that we are breathing, but our heart that is beating. On average, our heart beats 100,000 times per day, which means by this time of this year, Right now, today, we've had the chance to take roughly, our heart has had the chance to beat roughly 27 million times. This year, have you felt that heartbeat? Not just the physical heart that is beating, but the infinite essence that is enabling that heart to beat. So perhaps, let's all place our hand on our heart. Let's all take a deep breath in, sending it out. Another breath in, releasing it out. We can do that at any time. When something is going our way, we can pause for a moment and reflect on how grateful we are. When something is not going our way, we can pause and reflect how grateful we are to be here. You see, I found in my experience that it's very hard to be angry or frustrated or stressed if my mind is centered on gratitude, thankfulness, and appreciation. One of the two will tilt the scale within our mind. And we have the chance, being the thinkers of our experience, to think accordingly in alignment with those things which bring joy and happiness and gratitude into our minds, our bodies, and our beings. That's right. At any given moment. We could spend the rest of this year talking about all the things that we have to be grateful for, and we would not be able to exhaust that list. Mm -hmm. It is infinite. <clears throat> so again, have you been aware that you are just simply living. You see, we are filled with this infinite essence of life that is dwelling within us, and we are not just using it to assist in bringing us to life, but we are using this infinite essence that is dwelling at the depths of us to assist in coloring our reality. So there's a beautiful quote from a book that I love that many of you may have heard of, and if you haven't, I would encourage you to go out and, and look for this particular book. And it's, uh, it was put together in the 1960s, and it's by Dr. Maxwell Maltz, and the book is called Psycho-Cybernetics. I was living in Atlanta. That's where I stumbled upon this uh, spiritual teaching. I was reading it for, you know, reading the books and all those things. I don't know if you've ever been here, but I was driving through the South, and I'm like, there are a lot of churches. I grew up in Salt Lake City, and I thought there were a lot of churches there, but in Atlanta, it's a whole different world. And I was thinking, you know, there has to be some type of spiritual community, and so I jumped on the, you know, the trusty Google, and I walked into the Center for Spiritual Living of Atlanta, and it felt like home. And many of us have had similar experiences. But I was going to a bookstore in Atlanta, and I found this book, Psycho Cybernetics, and I got it for $1.80, and I felt like I was still in wisdom. I couldn't believe it. But this particular book by this uh, particular doctor who was a plastic surgeon, there was a beautiful quote, and it is in alignment with that which I just expressed, have we been aware that we are living? And the particular quote says, how can man, men and women stand in awe of the sunset, the ocean, a flower, a meadow, recognizing the beauty out here, but at the same time downgrade themselves? Did not the same creator also make you and I? You see, how can we look and stand in awe at all of these things that are taking place around us? You all live very close to the beach and looking at the way in which the sun sets each and every night and stand in awe and look at the beauty, but at the same time fail to recognize the beauty that is dwelling at the depths of you. He said, as he went down his particular path, he started recognizing he was a plastic surgeon, and he said when somebody would come into his particular place to get a scar removed, a nose corrected, something enlarged or something decreased, you know how we as humans do, we always find that there may be something wrong with us, he recognized that when people would come into his place of, of work to get these things physically altered on their body, the vast majority of individuals did not experience any type of transformation. 
by means of stepping out and being more confident or being more courageous or, or having a deeper sense of self-love and appreciation. And he said, because we, don't not, we all not only have this physical image that we make sure we're well put together, but there is also this image that nobody sees and it's the image that takes place within ourselves. The self-image. And a question that I like to ask is simply this. If you had the chance to meet the younger you today, you were sitting down for lunch. I know that's, you have to imagine this. If you were able to sit down with the younger you, would you look at that younger you and say, you've come a long way and I love you so much. I mean, what you've done with your life is incredible and exceptional. If everybody in the spiritual community embraced the same spiritual practice that you have with this spiritual community blossom and flourish. And perhaps one of my favorite questions, if somebody was able to venture with you through your inner world and ask to document what took place inside of yourself for the next six months, would they come back six months from today, stand in front of this community and say that your inner world reflected one of peace and beauty, appreciation, equality, happiness and joy, or would they even come back at all? You see, all of these questions ultimately remind us that there is an inner image that we are all assisting in assembling within ourselves that tends to dictate the way the external responds to us. Have you ever noticed that? The way that you see yourself tends to dictate how the outside world reacts to you. Now, it's interesting because, for some of you, you may remember this, but I grew up in this very unique part of America, and I, I grew up in, a, in Salt Lake City, Utah. Yes, now the next question that everybody has is, everybody together? I'm glad you asked. Um, growing up I was, however I no longer am, but as I like to stay, say, I still have family members who practice the Mormon religion, and I've learned in my life it's not my job to run around and tell people what path they should follow, because when I look deep enough, I recognize that all paths are leading the same way. So my little sister still does practice uh, Mormonism, but I, at a very young age, decided that was not the, the direction I wanted to go. Now, as it relates to particular, the way that I've been using this infinite essence to assemble my self-image, there are often things that all of us have carried or went through or gone through in our lives that have assisted the way in which we see ourselves. So in Salt Lake City, at a very young age, my parents went their separate way. My mom was adopted from Scotland. My father is African-American. When I was about nine years old, my mom started slipping down this very slippery slope of drugs and addiction, which meant my sisters and I spent time with my grandparents in this very nice part of Utah. And it didn't take long until I looked out into the community and recognized that things didn't really match up. You see, first and foremost, my grandparents supported us with a very small social security check. So I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you did not have what everybody else had. And I remember going to school and it's like, I like to tease, I had a t-shirt, but it's like the polo horse ran off the side, so I just had a shirt, you know? <laughs> On top of that, there, everybody in our community had a mother and a father at home. My mom was scraping along rock bottom. I didn't have a relationship with my dad until I was 16. And then when I got to about seventh grade, I, I really started recognizing that my sister and I were two of the only kids with a slight different tint of skin. And it wasn't long until teachers started placing us in these small boxes of limitation. It wasn't long until people in our community said that we couldn't go over to their houses because they thought we would do something. And as a young individual, not knowing how to internalize what another person is saying about you, I brought other people's ideas within my heart and my being, and I actually believe that's who I was. Have you ever been there? Yes. Where we actually put more weight and value on the opinions of another person than we do on the still small voice that is dwelling within ourselves. And so I walked around with this type of ideation. And as I like to say, my father had a spiritual friend, and I do this because I think I am probably one of those spiritual friends to my friends. And this is an individual who says those type of things that I'm sure many of you have heard or perhaps said. A little statement such as, there's no spot where God is not. <laughs> or, or how about this, divine order is everywhere present. Have you ever heard those type of words? <laughs> and you see, I, I reunited with my dad after high school, went to college in Seattle, and his spiritual friend would always try to bombard me with these type of ideas. And I remember having these debates with him as to why everything that he was saying was based in absolute nonsense <laughs> and foolishness. And the reason why is because I just went through these particular experiences at a very young age, and I could point at very real things that were happening. My mom entering into rehab for the third time. 
My little sister is still down in Utah with nobody to remind them how incredible and beautiful they are. My grandparents reaching that age where they are going to pass away. And I thought I made a very good case as to why everything that he said was complete nonsense. And he gave me a book, and this book was a book I'm sure many of you have heard of, and that is A Course in Miracles. And I remember, you know, there's something very fascinating about books. There's a lot of knowledge that are, are filled within them. But, you know, in order to get that knowledge and that empowerment from those books, there's a, a, a very important action that we must do. And it starts with, like, opening them. Have you ever, had, have you ever open, opened a book? And then it just, you can't just stop there. Like, there's lines, and you have to read them, and then interpret them, and then put them into action. Traveling around, I've noticed, and I think about my experience in my life, we have so much intellectual bricks of knowledge contained within our minds, and still yet we're out there trying to accumulate more. How can we put these intellectual bricks of knowledge into action to actually start creating something that is totally transformational? And as I like to say, it's not just about change. It's not just about change because change is ultimately temporary. Change is what happens with the season. Uh, well, not really here, I guess it's supposedly fall, but you know, you go from hot or, or summer to fall to winter to spring. So change ultimately means that there's a, a place we can go back to if it doesn't work out. But what happens for me and for many of us on this path is we don't just experience a change, but we truly experience a transformation. And a transformation is what happens when a tree blossoms from a seed. You cannot squeeze that tree back into that seed. It is irreversible. When our conscious minds begin to expand, it is very difficult for us to go back to where we once were. And so this whole idea of, of our, of our self-image, this whole idea of transformation, this whole idea of looking back in our lives and pinpointing the things that we have used as materials to assemble the way that we see ourselves, and then not taking a spiritual bypass by saying that, well, everything is perfect and, and everything is in divine order, but honestly looking and reflecting that there are areas out here in the world that could use our love, our attention, our energy, our empowerment, our strength, our positivity, and all of those things. It's not just about sitting in a, in a small little space and feeling as if we've cultivated the state of peace that is always within reach, but it's about bringing that peace out from within ourselves and sharing it with the world. And that's exactly what happened to me. You see, because here I was running around feeling as if I was less than, feeling as if I was not valuable, feeling as if I was not worthy. And the vast majority of people just simply let me continue to believe that idea. And I was moving with it trying my best to figure out how I could elevate into a greater state of awareness. But there were a few people who took time out of their day to plant these small little seeds within my mind and my heart that would encourage me to transform and expand into a greater version of myself. All the way back to when I was in fourth grade, my teacher probably doesn't even know that she did this but told my grandmother, can I pay for Jafon to play baseball and soccer because we didn't have any extra money. Or my, my uh, sophomore English teacher who took time to introduce me to authors like Langston Hughes and, and W.E.B. Du Bois. In, in my studies, we didn't ever learn about any African-American writers. Or my dean in, in my college who took time out of her day every single week to just listen to me and encourage me that there was a possibility. And I share all of this with all of you because there are people in your life and there are people who you are seeing and there are people who you have interacted with where we had the chance or have the chance to deposit these seeds of hope, of inspiration, of transformation, and of empowerment. But if we're unwilling to recognize that within ourselves, what makes us think that we can pour from an empty pitcher? So all of this, it's such an important topic and such an important conversation. I mean, we, we come together every single week, and, and I'm hoping that we're able to recognize this beauty, this life that we are able to share together, this collective golden thread that is able to weave all of us as we are sitting here in this very moment of now taking that breath, filling those heartbeats. So my mom has been, I, I got to say this because sometimes I forget. My mom has been clean and sober now for about 11 years. Wonderful. Which is very important, and as I like to say when I'm working, especially in uh, addiction and treatment, when I go in and do, do workshops, if my mom can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> you know? 
And so my little sisters are doing great. I have the wonderful opportunity to travel and, and work with organizations across the nation. My dad is blossoming in his own unique way. And my mom often says, well, Jay, she calls me Jay, uh, how do I do that? How can I start looking within and doing some introspection to change the way that I have been seeing myself? And I say the greatest place for us to start is simply what's taking place within our minds. You see, we are all thinking machines. Moment by moment by moment, we are thinking. But scientific studies have now shown that by the time we reach age 35, roughly 95% of what we do is unconscious. So when you entered into this room, or you saw me, or when I came up here to start speaking, what were the, what were the thoughts and feelings that were flowing from you? When you're driving down the street and you see a multi-million dollar house on the hill and a group of individuals living, on a living in a tent, what are the different thoughts that you have about those two individuals? Can we as individuals reach a state where we recognize that it does not matter where another human being may be, no human is superior nor inferior to anybody? And maybe taking the step to recognize that we are not superior or inferior to anybody else regardless. For we are all filled by the same essence of life and it would seem that that which when we start believing that one is superior or inferior is the moment where we start creating exclusion and lack of inclusion for other individuals wherever they may be. So my mom will say, Jafon, how do I begin this process? And I always take her back to her thoughts. And it's hard for us to think about our thinking, to recognize that we are the thinkers of our experience. And simply put, are your thoughts constructive in matter, or are your thoughts destructive in nature? There's a beautiful quote by Marcus Aurelius who said, the happiness of our life depends upon the quality of our thoughts. Therefore, guard accordingly and take care to entertain no notions unsuitable to virtue and reasonable nature. So what is the quality and the state of our thoughts? somebody was truly able to look and come back and share with everybody what those thought patterns were within our minds, would we like to share that with people? Maybe sometimes yes, maybe sometimes no. And that's the first step towards creating this inner image that is reflective of that which we truly are, which cannot be encompassed in a 20-minute talk which cannot be encompassed in every Sunday service for the rest of our lives, which cannot be encompassed in all the books that are in the bookstore. You see, it takes a lot to try to reflect upon that which we are. It cannot be put into words because it simply is. So another pattern or another process that we can begin to embrace to recognize that is not just the thoughts that we think, but the emotions that we feel each and every day. The feelings. Thoughts and feelings tend to align with each other. Have you ever woke up and felt great and suddenly those feelings of feeling wonderful fuel thoughts that help you reinforce those feelings of feeling wonderful? And maybe on the opposite end, maybe more often than not, you wake up and you're like, man, this is another day, here we go. And then those feelings reinforce thoughts that reinforce those feelings and you're just in this cyclical motion. Are you with me or am I speaking, um, am I making sense? Okay, okay. Well, with that clap, I'm done. No, okay. We have four more hours. You're doing great. Um, thoughts, feelings, choices, actions are the paintbrushes that we are using to assist in coloring this blank canvas of our life. Are we really willing to recognize that we have the ability to use these paintbrushes each moment of each day? If not, then we'll continue to color the canvas of our reality the way that we've been coloring it throughout our experience. And it seems as if we're at a place in, the, in time, a place in our world where we need more individuals, where we have more individuals that are stepping towards this understanding, not just parking it within our minds and our consciousness, but really bringing it out into action. And it just seems that's, that's exactly where we are. And so as I stand up here before you, it's important for me to state that I've been able to embrace it. I've been able to embrace it, and I've been studying it for quite some time, but it takes a, a little bit of, of energy and time and a willingness, a confidence, a courageousness to then step out and start being the person who you are here to be. So in the span of just about three years, I started speaking at CSL communities. I started speaking at Unity churches, and I thought that that was, was you know, oh, I, can't, I couldn't wait. 
I was always just hoping, you know, if somebody just gives me an opportunity, that's all that I need. And it was fascinating because in Atlanta, I spoke in our, our center there was roughly 500 people. And I spoke and, and it took me six months to actually get the confidence and courageousness needed to reach out to other places. And after that, a cascading effect began to take place. And then I wanted to level up. You see, I wanted to start speaking not just to CSL communities, but actually in the, the corporate world or with organizations or the government. And I thought, you know, well, all I have to do is just send a few emails. And I, I was in for a rude awakening. That is not all you have to do. <laughs> there is some inner work that has to take place. But in the span of about three years, and I share this with you because this is a community that is embracing those declarations and those principles that we talk about. In three years, I've had the chance to work with NASA. I've had the chance, I always work with the, the uh, National Guard, the Army, the Air Force, helping them recognize ways that they can dissolve barriers of exclusion and start building bridges of inclusion. I travel around and I work with Kroger. I travel around and I work with all of these different organizations and I say all of this not to say, well, look at me, aren't, aren't I an incredible individual? But more, say, more so to encourage you to look within and say, how can I blossom into my potential? Who is waiting for me? Am I truly living? Because if we stand behind the truths that we declare, then we have everything that we need. Ralph Waldo Emerson has a beautiful quote that says, if you can't find truth right where you are, then where do you expect to find it? We can keep looking through books can keep looking in the world. We can keep searching out here, but my friends, I'm encouraging all of us to look within here and recognize that everything that we need is within reach, closer than the breath that we breathe, nearer than the heart that beats within us. It's the very essence that enabled us just to simply wake up today and be here in this moment of now. So in conclusion here today, I've sh I, I believe I shared a poem last time I was here with you all. Um, is it okay if I end with a, a brief poem? Yeah. Okay, it takes about 45 minutes. So just so. <laughs> it goes as follows. What would happen if we y'all chose to rise together? What would happen if we y'all chose to stand together? Instead of plotting and planning to undermine each other. Instead of pointing the finger at a fellow brother and telling them that they're the reason for the problems or demanding that they're the ones to solve them. Are we all walking on the sacred garden? The planet Earth that is always revolving around the sun sea, all of us illuminated. Some have slipped up and others have deviated from the higher purpose, a deeper plan, fallen victim, temptations of a man. Now I understand no one can tell us who to be. Gotta rise above the selfishness and all the greed. Gotta open up our hearts so we can finally see. And if we do this as a people, then we all are free. Thank you for your time, your energy, and your attention. So before we settle into a, a brief prayer, uh, just a few quick things. One, if you would like to be on a new uh, email list, I have one right over there by the friendship table, and then two, uh, we have a workshop later, later today, if you have time and energy, you're more than welcome to come back. Uh, the workshop is focused on living from source, about creating that abundant inner world and then stepping out and allowing that to reflect from the inside out. So if you would like to learn more about that, please feel free to ask me after service. And with that, let us all sit as we are. Eyes gently closed if that feels comfortable for you. Feet resting on the ground. Crown of the head reaching up towards the ceiling. And from this space, let us take a deep breath in, releasing it out. And know this with me. For there was one power, one presence, one glorious God essence that is flowing throughout all things. It is that which is enabling the sacred sun to shine down upon this abundant earth. It is that which is holding the planets in space. It is perfect, it is whole, it is complete, and it is always within reach for you and I are one with this sacred essence. For it is that which enabled us to simply wake up today. 
It is that which is breathing our breath through us, which is enabling our heart to beat, enabling us just to simply be. So recognizing this one power, this one presence, embracing this unification that we have with this God essence, may we all realize that as we go throughout this day, we are divinely guided in the right way. We are led towards our highest and best. We are able to bring that potential that is dwelling within us out into this reality. May we realize this not just for ourselves, but realize everybody is empowered by the sacred essence. Recognizing this power, embracing this unification, standing upon this realization, may we all just simply reflect in gratitude, knowing that there are more things that we can be grateful for than we ever could count. Let each breath be a reflection of this thanksgiving and this gratefulness. Embracing all of these things, the power that is dwelling within us, the oneness that we share with God, realizing that we are divine, realizing that we are led, realizing that we are guided and sitting in this state of gratitude. May we release these words out into the ethers, knowing that that which we send out into the universe comes back to us multiplied abundantly and reflecting in all of this. May we all say together, and so it is. <laughs>
time for our offering. The stewards will please come forward. So as we take our gift in our hand, we can feel its energy. And we fill this gift with love. We fill it with opportunity. We are grateful for this opportunity to give as we receive out of the fullness of our hearts. So we're doing the chant first, is that correct, or second? Okay, so let us do the affirmation together. My offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply, and it symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply. drums and all.
to stand so we can recognize you because this is how the center runs is for people that give up their time and their talent and their treasure. Thank you so much. And there's a special set of these people that are called practitioners and practitioners are people that who have been trained in the art and the science of affirmative prayer. And that's what we do here at this center. We know that prayer is one of the most sp powerful spiritual tools that we have in our spiritual toolbox. So if you would like to have a taste of that um, uh, with a practitioner today, we have three practitioners. It is Pam Rock, Cheryl Lyman, and Marlene Cutler. They're available after the service for a, a little while if you would like to have them uh, do a treatment or a affirmative prayer with you. Um, and so let's acknowledge all of, all of our people. We have a gift for you if you're here for the first time, if you'd like to stand. Hi. And um, we have a little green bag, and in that bag is a card, and you'll take it into the bookstore and receive a gift, which is a book. And we would like to affirm you. So... Um, Welcome, new visitor. Welcome, new visitor. You are home, and we love you. You are home, and we love you. Let's give them a hand, please. Oh, yes. It's the first of the month of October. Well, it's the first week of October, first Sunday in October. So we're celebrating birthdays this month. <laughs> So anyone who has a birthday in October, please say it. Yay! Happy birthday to you. Stay after the service and join in our communal feast, which is held on the first Sunday of each month. This is your opportunity to share your favorite food and converse with your spiritual community and fill your belly. It smells good, too. Then at Nude Conscious Connections is held right here in the sanctuary. It's just a brief discussion about today's topic. should be interesting. And child care is available. Follow Conscious Connection, you don't want to miss today's awesome speaker, which you didn't miss already, but there's more. Jeff Von Seeley as he facilitates a workshop, Living from a Source, Mastering the Art of Being. See the flyer in your program for more details. Or ask come. him personally. Yeah, he's yeah. right. This week at Wednesday's Wisdom, Charlie Summer will present Using Humor to Find God. So come at 7, laugh a lot, and be inspired. Yes. Starting next Sunday, October 13th, Aiden Greeny is teaching the Science of Mind 101 class on the spiritual path. This is an eight-week session and is ideal for both new students and anyone who'd like to review the basics. Sign up on the kiosk. And starting on Tuesday, October 15th at 6.30, Dr. Heather is starting Practitioner 1 class. 
And there are prerequisites for this class, so uh, if you want to enroll, please see Dr. Heather. Get out your calendars and prepare to mark them. <laughs> On October 20th at 1230, celebrate the legacy of Louise Hay with a workshop called Love Yourself, Heal Your Life, facilitated by Patricia Crane, PhD, and Rick Nichols. This time together will touch your heart and deepen your awareness of how to really love yourself. Flyers are available in the lobby. And then on October 27th, uh, Reverend Ed Lemberg from the Greater Milwaukee Center for Spiritual Living will be here to present a workshop, Personal and Spiritual Empowerment. Um, and he intertwines music with his, um, with his message. Original music. Yes. More information is on the kiosk. Today's flowers. Purple. Are from June and Dan in honor of Reverend Judy's birthday on October 1st. Happy birthday, Reverend. And now I'd like to invite Jamie Kalama up with an announcement from Shifting Sands. Okay. Okay. Is that working? Good morning. Good morning. By the way, Jeff Baum, I was raised Mormon, married in the temple, BYU, and now I'm free. <laughs> Thank you for this freedom. So I can really... Okay. My announcement is about this wonderful, wonderful group that gets together every Thursday morning from 10.30 to 12.30. And it's called Shifting Sands. We don't get a lot of advertisement, let's say. And so we thought, okay, let's do one. Because a lot of you probably don't even know what it is. So we meet in the classroom. Most of us are retirees or work from home or just have two hours on a Thursday morning. <laughs> and we each lead the class at one week or another we sign up. And let me tell you, preparing to give those classes is so amazing because what you teach you have to know. So learning new stuff and teaching it is such a fabulous, mind-expanding experience, and I'm so grateful for it. So I'm just going to give you a few topics that we have covered recently. The Green New Deal, climate change, memory quiz for Alzheimer's screening. That was very interesting. I'm amazed I remembered it. Passport to the Cosmos, we talked about alien encounters, UFOs, and the highly evolved beings in the universe. Integrity, the benefits of cannabis, <laughs> spiritual practices of indigenous peoples, that was a lesson on the Hawaiian, ancient Hawaiian culture, and my son Kai came and did some beautiful Hawaiian chants. So that was a highlight. Uh, healing old wounds. Who, who doesn't have old wounds? Come on. Even here, even with our belief system. Um, we have, actually have a couple of activists, and they've done uh, some demonstrating and some fact finding. One, <clears throat> two of them went to the border at the beginning of when the child separation, family separation was happening down there. <coughs> Brought back fascinating information. And also there was a climate march a couple weeks ago in Laguna. Some of us went to that. It's just a wonderful way to share your wisdom with all of us and for us to share our wisdom with each other. And it's a wonderful benefit as long as we've lived, no matter how old the people are, no matter how young the people are that come, we all have some wisdom. Not all the same. It's very fascinating to me. And everything you talk about there, because we do get into, you know, personal. You always do. Everything there is confidential. It's the freest place I personally have all week long when I truly can express myself and know that whatever I say here stays here. I love my shifting sands. Do you think you could stand up and show your wonderful faces, those of the shifting sands attendees? Look at them, wise. We have many others as well, but we need more people. 
we get tired of teaching every three weeks. So we need more people, and we welcome you. We love you, and we really hope to see you Thursday morning at 1030. And now, release the children. Still out of mind. 